afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. John Belkwoods, and we're here to talk to you today about the magical world of concrete, specifically concrete durability. We're in one of the nastiest winters we've had in a long time here in Colorado. What we often see is use of a de-icing salt or brine on our state and local highways, federal highways, we saw see more of our brines out here and then residential neighborhoods as well as the department stores and what have you. It's just shake on salt. Um, so how does that impact our concrete pavements? And we're focusing today on conventional concrete versus exposed aggregate slabs. Ba 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 bum. And we've got a picture for you. Ding! So, um, so what we've got in this picture on the left-hand side, you've got this exposed aggregate, and on the right-hand side, you've got your conventional concrete slab, pretty nicely broom finished. Uh, and the question is, how are either of those, and this is a voiceover, right? So can I use a different voice? Can I use a Russian cosmonaut? I'm not going to. Not today. Kind of. Hello! My name! No, okay, no, I'm not going to do it. So we have the, the exposed aggregate on the right versus the conventional concrete, or left versus the conventional concrete on the right. And when it comes to de-icing salts and brines, there, you know, there's a great article written by uh, Professor uh, uh, Jason Weiss from Oregon State University on how these different de-icing salts and brines you know, create a calcium oxychloride from the calcium hydroxide salt combination that expands within the hydrated cement matrix causing, uh, you know, the, the, the backbone of concrete strength to break down. When we have an exposed aggregate uh, surface, what we're effectively doing is creating an environment for more of those salts to get around the interfacial zone. To, to get to the most uh, sensitive portion of the concrete mix, the concrete composite, and, and, and really start causing deterioration at that interfacial zone between the aggregate and the hydrated cement matrix that will eventually overcome, well, these expansive forces that are going to overcome the shear and tensile capacity of the hydrated cement matrix, especially around that interfacial zone, eventually causing the aggregates to pop out. Now, once that starts happening, we start exposing more surface area to this nasty, vicious cycle. So, hey, listen, I love exposed aggregate look. I mean, it really is awesome. And I really don't care how you go about the look, whether or not you use a surface retardation uh, chemical like a sugar or a simple syrup or you know something fancier than that or you come back and you grind that surface down you're really doing the same thing and you know even if you say to me well John I'm gonna put a sodium silicate based densifier I'm gonna put a colloidal silica based densifier and then I'm gonna come back and seal it and I'm gonna seal it over and over again you're still just recognize what you're doing you're exposing the surface and all there's no sealer out there that's going to change the fact that you're in an abrasive environment and that doesn't count the ambient. I'm just talking about tire traffic, pedestrian traffic, even just erosion from wind, rain, and you know, then you put in the snow loads and the ice loads. I mean, your concrete surface is you know, eventually going to break up. Um, once you expose that aggregate, you're just accelerating that cycle. And yes, sealers will make it stronger and last longer, but it's not going to make it impermeable. And it's not going to make it last forever. So just bear that in mind when you get into your exposed aggregates. Let us know if you got any concrete questions, concrete concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications.